What's up, all inners, and welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast, the podcast for casual leaguers. I'm the League Dad, and I'm joined by Kevin Mitchell and Alistair. That's right, we're on video this time. Uh, not doing it live, but we're, we're trying something out. We're recording it. Uh, we used to do it on video way back when, uh, kind of went away from that, then brought back the audio. Now we're bringing back the video, and hopefully in a week or two, we can uh, be live streaming, and I think that would be really fun because then we can interact with you guys uh, on the show, um, and I think there's just a, a lot of opportunities there uh, to connect with everyone out there, but uh, we're here to recap week six of the LCS. A lot of great uh, matchups on paper uh, the games for me I thought they were pretty interesting but initial thoughts what did you guys think of the games I thought they were pretty fun they were pretty interesting um, definitely entertaining uh, more so than quality gameplay I would <laughs> yeah. say uh, we got some more upsets and just weird crazy games where things didn't make that much sense but you mm. know it was fun to watch so yeah. whatever <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I would say I keep. I'll probably keep making this comparison. It's like it's like when you watch college basketball. It's fun because they are perfect. Um, so there's just like a lot of cool stuff that you can see that you won't see elsewhere because elsewhere they just play at a better level. Um, here you can see people play at a level that you understand. Uh, I will say that I'm super surprised that C9 lost again. Um, that's yeah. that's crazy to me. Yeah. I thought for sure that was a one-off, and then the most garbage version of eg beat them and team look at eg for the first yeah. time in this like in franchise version of tl versus eg rivalry yeah so i'm like i thought eg was doomed but um the swell bros pulled through yeah they, uh they did super it super surprising yep golden uh, uh, not golden guardian golden glue had a really good game there that yeah. game too so that was, was a surprise. It was two games in a row c9 lost right they lost to their second game last week and their first yep. game this week that's right, right. for sure yep. uh, and then they had they had a oh they had a much better game against FlyQuest, but FlyQuest played doo doo. Yeah, there's there's a lot of teams I think very questionable at this point. Um, teams were are they're constantly like up and down. Like I don't know what's mm -hmm. happening, and so it, it does make our predictions, which we'll get to at the end, a little bit interesting. We did we did overall do a little bit better this week, but still there were some picks that are kind of just like, huh, what's happening? And uh, I think that's kind of what you have to expect now in the LCS. Now there was a lot of games, like we said, we didn't even really pick uh, uh, just one match of the week because there were so many good ones. Uh, but talk about like your favorite match of uh, this week. And uh, you know what you what you thought about it. You know your impressions. Did it surprise you? What was good about that game? What was bad about that game? Uh, and I'll kick it off. Uh, for me, you know, I did pick um, FlyQuest TSM as my match of the week that I wanted to see, but hey. it was a big disappointment. And and Mitchell, I, I mean, we'll get it out now. Mitchell was the only one that predicted it uh, FlyQuest's yep. way. However, however. Come on, man. They gave the game at like one minute. Like the game yeah. was done. I didn't even, I just, I was watching the VOD and I just was fast forwarding. I was like, this is over already. That's <laughs> funny. Fast forwarded. So like that it one. was a, it was a big I letdown. Yeah. It was a big letdown. Whereas, you know, um, you know, on the other hand, fly quest, I mean, excuse me, evil geniuses and cloud nine, where I was like, Oh, this is going to be, uh, I thought, you know, cloud nine for sure. We, we all voted cloud nine was going to you know, hand, hand it to EG and EG comes out upsetting. So on a gameplay, that was a big surprise, even though that wasn't really the one I thought was going to be close. And so for me, those were the games that were exciting uh, for me. What, what about you guys? Yeah, I, I definitely agree with the EG C9 for me was the most exciting yeah. just because like EG went from playing super, super terribly against Team Liquid. Mm -hmm. They had like a really bad draft. Really bad. Um, they just didn't look like a team at all just like five solo key players and then they come into playing against cloud nine and they like kind of smashed them like it was a little close at the beginning like and it, it felt like one of those classic c9 games where they kind of fall behind early mm -hmm. and then cloud nine just like ends it mm -hmm. but it just never happened we were just waiting for cloud nine to get in there and they never did and uh zazel brought out the shirelia's alistar that was yeah crazy. that, that was, was pretty fight. awesome yeah i was like wow that is That's i like to see yeah. yeah, Alistair, you see? Yeah. He's also um, one of the few Alistair players to begin with. So uh, That's true. That's true. He has not so, been picked that much. Um, well, I'm exactly. not happy that I'm happy we tried some, or, and they tried something new for once. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um that was pretty good. Honestly, um let's unpack this game a little bit since uh, it was kind of the upset of the week. Uh so let me get your thoughts uh Kevin and Alistair on, on this match uh, and then we'll kind of stay on here and talk talk a little bit more about it. 
You go first. Yeah, so this match was interesting in that it was not, it was one of the first matches, at least in recent memory for me, that the team that, well, okay, there's only been two teams that beat Cloud9, but essentially there wasn't like an early game lead. Yeah. It wasn't like they they snowballed and it was like, you know, sometimes when the game snowballs, you're just like, okay, I get it. The items were bigger, the numbers were bigger, you guys won. No, I, honestly, they kind of just systematically beat them. Like, Golden Glue was landing a lot of poke, he just got a lot of bubbles, yeah. and he just went in, and he wasn't scared. And quite frankly, it just looked like, it's, I would say the worst performer in this game was either Licorice or Blabber. Like, those were the two mm. people who needed to show up the most. And, like, Kuni on not Karma Top. Yeah, not Karma Top. Yeah. He still can play his signature um, GP quite well. Mm -hmm. Uh Ironically, they I think Kanai banned Kar Kanai banned Karma that game. Yeah, they yeah. Did. And I mean, I don't know if that was for mid lane because they probably suspected Golden Glue would play it, but mm -hmm. it, it was just not it. Um, so Huni took over. I thought that Golden Glue had a really standout game, and Zazel was also quite good. Like I th yeah. think his roams were impressive. I just this was a very uncharacteristic C9 game. I but the thing is they lost twice in a row, so it may yeah. be kind of characteristic. And <laughs> The biggest problem with this game, to, to just end it out there before I ramble too long, is that it is really weird that they even lost not going like a weird Wukong comp or something. Like mm -hmm. it's, you, the excuse of like, they didn't go standard, they didn't go, you know, they were just trying stuff out is not going to fly this time. Right. They pretty much played Lee and Set are pretty pretty yeah. good characters for them. I don't know how Niski is on Syndra historically, but Zven on Ash is good. And then Vulcan's playing like a super meta character in, in Bard, which sounds weird to me. But Bar has played <laughs> so much across all the regions yeah, right now. It's yeah. like 70 or 80 percent pick rate in LPL is what I know. I don't know about LEC as much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, Alistar, what would you think? I mean, honestly, I, I, this sounds weird to say about C9. I wasn't a huge fan of the draft, realist, really. I, it, it just looks weird on paper. I mean, I get, I get that Reaper, to, Reaper tends to make drafts work that just aren't conventional, but this one just seemed kind of... They, they didn't seem to win, at least in my opinion, at really any in any lane in the matchup, except for maybe top lane. Yeah, definitely. I think the lanes were a, a bit of a problem, but, um, you know, I, I think going back to the points of Huni being on a champion like GP, where he's really good. I mean, honestly, a lot of his champs that he's been playing lately, even though he's had a, a little bit of a break, just have been not good like even his lucian top has been pretty terrible like when we've seen it so uh i i Don't was really that. interested when that i saw clip. the gp pick yeah when he saw the gp pick i i thought this was going to be uh kind of like a a good measure test of huni to see if he was actually still capable mm -hmm. of competing at this level because um you know if you're just tuning in didn't even know like yeah huni replaced kumo in the top lane um and then uh who was it um jazuke got to get replaced by golden glue yeah who would have thunk man jazuke yeah. getting replaced by golden glue these are golden boy yeah like what what is <laughs> happening and honestly again i am happy i know i i uh put a lot of crap on uh, golden glue last split because i was not a big fan and honestly the his first game back uh didn't look so uh good and uh you know to his credit he played great on uh zoe so i have to give him credit for that and again huni stepping up um but overall i think just great play it was like night and day from eg and this is what i mean by like how do you really know? Because they look so terrible the game before. And then <laughs> here against Cloud9, you're like, what is happening? And even the casters were just like over and over. They're like, what is this? Like, who who is this team? Because it was just completely different. So uh, any yeah, last thoughts on that? Think, you could tell from the casters that they were yeah. expecting like, oh, yeah, Cloud9 will come back at any moment now. They just start pushing it in and they're mm -hmm. going to win. Um, I would say actually, so I would argue actually across the board, they win lanes in every lane. I think Syndra systematically destroys zoe mm. as a matchup because of the way her her blink back on her r works you can yeah, just destroy yeah. her with eq and then all and it's, it's an easy really setup for ganks um and then i think ash bard just no no one's gonna argue that felios uh alistar in lane should beat ash bard mm. um, oh 100 so yeah, like no in contest. laning phase i think there was a lot of strength the synergies i think this was supposedly a pick on where you could just bard yeah, or Bardol. Ashall into bard all into kick or any or even eq yeah. like or like, like there's so many options but i never saw a single combo i so mean either that, or maybe i never saw like a meaningful combo like yeah, whoever that's... did stuff but it was didn't look like they had any idea how those units were supposed to work together mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah. So I was confused as well. I do think the draft was a little odd, but I, at the end of the day, they could have easily won with this combo, and then we would have been like, okay, just a C9 group of characters. They I can make it work. I do agree, but I mean, I don't know the other lane matchups as well. So I, I'll, I'll just I'll stick to bot lane because that's mm -hmm. what I play. Mm -hmm. I don't like Ash as I'll pick here, with the exception of with the Bard, because if you look about if you look at it right, you've got Set who takes people away, Lee who kicks people away, Cinder who knocks people away, and Ash can't because Ash has no mobility at all. She can't really do much without no. that, you know, people keeping yeah. them in the spot for her to get on them. And if everyone's being taken away from her, then she has to walk forward. It's I just don't like it. And mm -hmm. to, to kind of like double up on that point is like Gangplank is really good at punishing low mobility ADCs. It's oh, also yeah, really good in Because you just yeah. throw your ulti on top of them and if they don't have flash, they just kind of have to sit in it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think another big point, and it's kind of a good segue into our Team Liquid talks, is like yeah. comparing Team Liquid versus EG and comparing Cloud9 versus EG. Jensen like absolutely smashed Golden Glue in lane, yeah. right? And, you know, Jensen's probably the best laner in the league right now. It makes sense. Niski is not the laner. He's given Nis he's given mm -hmm. Syndra a strong laner, but he's actually just so much better on roaming mid laners. Yeah, he's right. much more of a supportive mid laner. So when he's given a situation where he has counter pick in mid lane, he has Syndra winning matchup, he doesn't capitalize on the game. And that's mm -hmm. a big flaw in Cloud9's game plan, I think, is that, you know, he had four kills while the rest of his team was kind of falling behind, but he couldn't carry the game with all the gold in his pocket. Yeah. And then, you know, you just see it flipped the very next day when he's playing Galio against FlyQuest, and he's just yeah, stomping everything. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, I, I think you're right on that. And that's been kind of a signature for them um, is that they do play this roaming play style, especially with Blabber putting so much pressure on. And so I, I do think you're right in that if he's picking a, a champ that relies on a, on a winning lane and he's not winning lane, that's going to be a big yeah. uh, problem spot for them. And uh, maybe that's where we're starting to see a little bit of uh, their weakness there. Because um, like you said, the, Kevin, this wasn't a... Uh, like a weird draft or, or was it you else or somebody said this but it wasn't like a weird draft that they picked it was pretty standard nothing out of the ordinary there so it for all you know intents and purposes it was a try hard <laughs> it was a try hard comp right like they were actually uh playing serious and they didn't end up winning but transitioning into team liquid like uh you know mentioning the eg team, team liquid game team liquid is looking Good man, like I, I've been, we've been kind of on the fence. I, I've been feeling them though since the beginning. But there were those games where you're kind of like, should they win this? Kevin's, Kevin's holding his hands up because he's like, I said it all along. I knew it all along. <laughs> I, I, in the words of Kobe, I never doubted them. Never doubted, man. <laughs> well, th sure, that's buddy. one thing I wanted to ask is, do we, th do we say? Okay, I think it's pretty safe to say at this point that Team Liquid's the second best team in the league. Yeah. But is it yeah. fair to still say that Cloud Nine is definitively? the best because if you look at it i just looked at it right yeah team liquid mm -hmm. has won their last seven games mm -hmm. the only two games they've dropped is eg and team liquid or sorry uh, eg and uh c9 yep and which i mean they've had they've had games that they could have easily lost but i mean they still won a win and is a win yeah. and, win. and win. liquid <laughs> also lost eg yeah. but they also lost 100 thieves so is are they still definitively the best or is there some contest that's a good question yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go with cloud nine is definitely still the best i mean we'll find out next weekend sure. in our match of the week yeah but Team i'm Liquid gonna say cloud nine. Definitely the best like just if they have the same number of wins right so mm -hmm. then we have to measure it by quality of wins that is and true yeah good cloud point. nine beat team liquid in the head-to-head -head. that's a big night thing yep. and the quality of wins i mean there had every single win Cloud9 has has not been close. Not really. That's true. Every single Cloud9 win has not been close at all. And Team Liquid has had like three, four pretty close wins. Mm -hmm. And I can distinctly remember two incredibly close wins <laughs> yeah. against uh, yeah. Nail Biters. Toss and uh, Immortals. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'm going to still say Cloud9, but if Team Liquid. It's not as big. Beats, yeah, it's not as big. Yeah, it was like, you know, maybe up here to like maybe now a little bit closer, right? Mm -hmm. But if Team Liquid beats Cloud9 this weekend, then yeah, I think we can start talking about, yeah, maybe Team Liquid is just straight up better. But can't really say it till now. 
Cloud9 still deserves first place, in my opinion. Yeah, Let's see. The resident <laughs> team liquid. That's what I was gonna just say. It's like, what is the I'd resident team? I'd say like definitive is the only thing that's changed is the definitive has probably not mm. as much weight yeah. behind it. I, mean, I don't Cloud9 think they're better. Yeah, I think Cloud9 is still first by far. It's or not maybe not by far. That's the only thing that's different now, right? Mm -hmm. They their mm -hmm. first their quality wins is significant, but their average game win times like six and a half minutes quicker. Like oh, that's hilariously better. Yeah. Um, yeah. the only mm -hmm. issue is like the form they're showing right now since they've lost two games. One, one of which against EG, I kind of get. Uh, but the second one against uh, 100 Thieves is, like, kind of troublesome. The way they lost. Like, they just got stopped. Like, Blabber yeah, died, yeah. like, eight times. Um, like, yeah. my issue is, like, if I want my definitive best team, do I want my definitive best team to not be able to play late game correctly? That's a problem we used to have uh, with old TSM. We used to always win with old TSM in 2016, stomp everyone. We went to Worlds, and we didn't know what would happen if we didn't stomp everyone. Hmm. And then we didn't know how to play the mid-late game, like, 50-50 fights. And we barely didn't make it out of groups. Because I remember Hotzer didn't know how to cannon engage yeah. in, a, in a tricky situation near Dragon. I was like, good lord, help us. So that's like a very luxury worry for Cloud9. Hmm. That they might not be like as dominant as they could be on all facets of the game. But it's partially because our competition is so bad yeah. Um, yeah. compared to them. 100%. I still think they're first, long story short. <laughs> when, when, I, when I asked that, I didn't mean, are, can you argue they're the best? Because I think it's pretty clear that Cloud9 is still the best. I'm just saying, like, how close? what do you guys think is the how close? The closeness of it? Yeah, it's gotten closer. It's yeah, Team definitely gotten, gotten closer. Better. Yeah, I Team Liquid's gotten better. I think yeah. they've they've sharpened up some of their weak spots. Um, you know, for me, I think it rests on almost like Impact. If Impact doesn't int, <laughs> they have a good shot. Like honestly, when against the EG game, when he picked Mordekaiser, I was worried because. I was just like, so yeah, I was just like, this is not going to, but even though he was one, one and six, um, he was tanky enough to kind of do something. He was like, <laughs> you know, he, he soaked up a lot of damage and, you know, on the flip side, tactical was five, zero and six, you know, a core JJ zero, zero and 15, like everybody else took advantage of that. And so he was the meat shield for them and, and played his role. But here, here's, I'll flip this question on you guys, since we're talking about team liquid C9. Now, Tactical has been getting a lot of props, rightfully so, for the split. And Core JJ is also, I mean, he's always been good, but he's been playing real good lately. So, this guy's a god. This who guy's at like this moment is the better bot lane? Tactical Core JJ or Sven Vulcan? Dude, I'm going to take Core Tactical. JJ. Yeah, I'm going to take Core <laughs> Mitchell and I have been having this conversation. We, I, I don't <laughs> think Sven might not even be top two 80 Ooh. carries. Who's we had this then? conversation, Who's like two? looking at who was your potential to. Well, I think I think it's pretty clear the tactical is the best. Okay. I, right. I think that's pretty safe to say. I agree. So, like a world where Johnson doesn't have a shit team, maybe. Yeah, yeah. and I I'm and in I there. I'm now in there with Johnson. Th this might be a little controversial, but I don't actually think Sven is that much better than Double Lift. I don't because well, I feel like Sven... see both of them on TSM, so I yeah. don't I don't disagree. Yeah. <laughs> maybe when they're think... on maybe when they're on TSM they both suck. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I think I think Sven is I, I feel like Sven isn't some pop off super hype eighty carry like you would compare like a deft or a teddy kind of player sure. where they make tactical these plays. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, or tactical. I feel like he just does his job well enough mm. and he looks a lot better because the rest of his team dumpsters. Yeah. I don't think Sven is I, I don't think he's, he's not the as... focal point that's for sure well, exactly he's not the focal that's what i'm point. saying yeah I, I don't feel like there he's you know the like as amazing like the, yeah. the whole the whole oh he's going for a, a kda world record or something like that i feel like that was kind of yeah uh, to you his can't credit die if people can't kill you because everyone else is useless right yeah that's true i mean to zven's credit he does play his role very well like agree agree he is the late game insurance guy He's like very reliable, I think, um, except when he's, you know, on TSM, of course. But That's like right. now, I, I think he is very reliable. Um, he did kind of pop off against FlyQuest on Callista. So, you know, to mm -hmm. kind of shut up some of the naysayers. But I mean, I just agree. Like when I feel like I'm watching Clutch Games and it's up to Sven to carry, I do not feel like he does it. Mm -hmm. I feel like yeah, I, I would put more faith in other AD carries than than Sven like, personally. When when Team Liquid is faltering and they're about to lose, Jensen's dead, Impact is dead, Core J's missing stuff, Brox is you know on the other side of the map. Tactical does actually carry. Mm -hmm. He does. Where mm -hmm. it does not feel like Sven does it. Um, 
as much anyways. But, right. you know, as you were saying, it's harder to do that when, you know, Niski and Blabber are always popping off. So Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you shouldn't be trying to do that, actually. You don't want to be putting yourself as the risk taker as the AD carry if you sure. have so much carry power elsewhere. Because if you yeah. fall apart, then yeah, your galley is not going to actually do all the damage, even though it looks like he is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, like, I feel like he's not as... He he does his job, but he doesn't go beyond. Yeah, he's, kind of, yeah. he's not well, exceptional for the, what you would. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. From the best eighty carry or second best in your region. Um, and you know, yeah. like I wanted to look at. I'm just looking at their stats right now, just to compare, right? And um, you know, a lot of their stats are almost identical. So Sven actually has a slightly higher KDA, uh, nine point four to seven point seven with uh, tactical. Um, and their CS per minute is exactly the same at wow. 9.8. Uh, their, the gold per, per minute is 458 for Sven, 450 for tactical. Um, their kill participation, uh, tactical is almost at 70%, uh, which is pretty amazing, which may feel yeah, like yeah. why he's more has more agency than, than Sven, whereas Sven is like 62% kill participation. Uh, and tactical's damage percentage is also at 31% compared to Sven's 23%. Uh, percent 23 yeah on an 80 carry with this with that kind of gpm wait that's actually kind of sad in yeah because you're so, getting the same resources basically actually yeah. you're getting more resources than tactical well they're like i said their gold per minute is almost is the same and damage per minute if you look at this tactical is at 548 sven's at 449 so well, well statistics I mean, always need context right sure. Arguably, oh yeah your teammates are killing everything you can't yeah. do damage yeah and cloud nine <laughs> ends games faster so when so ADC who don't spike as early are just going to do less damage in the early game. True. So True. they don't have like 50 minute games against mortals, you know, yeah, where unfortunately is doing it. Those are the fun damage. games to watch. I love those games because <laughs> yeah. the better yeah. team wins. You can't just have like, oh, well, we don't buy like four dragons. Although I would argue even in peak like RNG back when Uzi was like on form and they were all really good. Mm -hmm. Like they, their games were short. Uzi was smashing lane and his gold, like his gold difference plus his damage difference was very high even despite the fact that the games were ending early just because he was actually were, doing stuff but they're camping bot lane every single game in yeah RNG. it was it was a very yeah. very different way of playing the game my, my yeah. point is that it's not like just because you win early you can't win through that lane it's like it's mm -hmm. just they don't choose to use him at all so like at the end of the day i don't even know if we can say he's good or not we just can't tell because they don't use him very often mm -hmm. but, yeah. i think we'll, we'll find like, out does this a wukong weekend. game have high damage per minute i don't Oh, no, so. it, doesn't, no, no, no. it should only yeah, do damage yeah. when you fight and then other than that it shouldn't be doing damage sure yeah yeah the wukong games are a good point as well yeah the damage share is going to be that's like good. a giant hole in your dps <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay um uh, i think i i, I want to talk about impact and broxo yeah. on team liquid man Let's do because it. <laughs> like sorry for the resident <laughs> team liquid fan but i was watching impact play against play lane against huni's karma mm. and there was this moment where he's about to get first blooded right and uh, Sven Skarin actually walks over a ward that Jensen placed in, in the, mm -hmm. in the, next to the Raptors, and he just walks up to the river and kills Impact, right? So you don't see it, but you can see it on the mini-map. Basically, Huni is holding three minion weight, or three minions, three mm -hmm. caster minions, and Impact wants to shove it into the wave, right? Yeah. But what he doesn't know, or maybe he does, I don't know, he's obviously <laughs> not thinking about it, is that it's a cannon wave. So it's mm -hmm. not enough minions for who need to freeze the lane. Mm -hmm. So he actually would just win out if he just lets Huni try and freeze it because it will slow push back to him. So yeah. all Impact had to do was just go to base. He would have come back to a slow push uh, and Huni would have to TP to shove it in yeah. or he gets a save TP. But because he tries to harass Huni and push the three caster minions in, he gives for his blood and he <laughs> fail flashes into the wall. I saw that. that flash was that honestly. Flash was I think scary. I feel like why did he run that way? I feel like he could have just ran back straight back and flashed. Like he could have done ten million. There's things like he so many things right? there that he could have avoided that. You know, I honestly think there was a gentleman's agreement between him, Impact, and Huni, where they're like, "We're just gonna go ham." Doesn't matter. We're just gonna eat, guys. guys. We're gonna see what happens. You, man. All <laughs> I'm gonna say that. is that Liquid is guaranteed playoffs, and it doesn't matter how Impact plays in regular season. It's <laughs> yeah, never it's true. Mattered. It literally uh -huh. never mattered. You saw a few games this season where Liquid like he tried a bit, and he was really sick on like a hey, more. Yeah. Shen was awesome. All right, his yeah. Shen, Shen was amazing. Shen's getting buff next patch, by the way. Seven, nice. uh, 10, it makes me wonder why there's I don't not know more why Shen he's getting actually. Buff, but yeah, uh, it's because Shen requires like a very certain playstyle. He has a lot of odd mechanics to him. 
And I think a lot of people at a pro level just don't enjoy it. Although Orn's played a lot, to be hey, fair. Hey, Cloud9's yeah. going to play Shen. I guess. Yeah, my... that's Orn. To be fair, that, that's bad. Is Orn. He does everything. Orn, yeah. uh, my issue is that I don't know what's up with Broxa. Um, yeah. He's not mm. proven in NA. He still hasn't been proven in NA. Yeah. And the fact that they're 10-2 without him doing anything is very strange to me. To say I think it's just because <laughs> yeah. tactical is so good. I, yeah. I think so it's their bot lane. is just so much better than any other bot lane. Right? Right? Because, like, so nothing else too. has changed in the roster. Core JJ is playing better, but like you could, s I honestly think it's just like either synergy with tactical plus like the trust in tactical to like stay stay in lane, not die when he goes to roam, mm -hmm. like all that stuff that you like. If you've ever played support, there's like a lot of inherent stuff. Like your AD carry who calls you over to like do stuff for you all the time. Like sometimes that will limit your options and limit your power around the map. If yeah. you know your AD carry is the type to just in, then yeah, like. Not the saying that double always into, but there's definitely double is known for like being the sideline. Like, oops, I overextended a little bit. <laughs> um, he's done it on this season even. Um, so I think that the upgrade, I don't. It's weird to see say still, but like with double gone, like it just seems like the team has so much more freedom to choose where they want to carry through, and then they always have the insurance plan of tactical. Sorry, that's I, my dog. I, I, I miss Nick Smithy though. I feel like oh like my god, oh, this agreed. version of X Smithy needs to be on Liquid. I I mean Dude, I like I don't know why they got rid of him. personality, There's but no comparison. It, I, he's so I I good. think for the way Team Liquid plays, I think Broxa is pro might be the better player, but I think X Smithy is just the better player for that team. He's better I, I at his play least, style. I think X Smithy is just better. I I think <laughs> I mean I like X Smithy though. Yeah, I think Broxa I, I do is too. better at least him. That's about it, in my That's, mind. I, I've said it before. Sure. I think if... I'm pretty sure if Team Liquid hadn't gotten rid of X-Smithy, they would still have had double lift. Yeah, oh, I agree. 100%. I think I so. Yeah, 100%. Agree. There wouldn't have been but those visa are, problems. Are we better off having Tactical in Core JJ, though? That's Which, true. Oh, probably. Probably. Like, Don't get me wrong. I, th I think Tactical is better than double lift. The bot lane is better now? Oh, that's such, so, so weird. Hey, well, fun uh, fact. The bot Tactical and Core JJ, they went Deathless this week. They did Damn. not die. Damn. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. So That's a good perfect lane. KDA right there, man. That's when you're uh, playing Bard and literally just running around like you don't give a shit. And he's like, not yeah. building Dead Man's plate either. He's building, yeah. he's building like low health like, items too. He was oh, oh and fifteen that game. I he's, think he is. His Bard is probably like one in like the top five, top three in the world of all the regions I've seen. Like this guy's Bard is sublime. I'm like, yeah. is should I learn Bard? Is like what I think I, of when I, I, I watch. Play, I used play. to play Bard quite a bit Bard. and. You don't like the thing is, is I, I would win a lot and I'm not good at all. So like to watch him <laughs> play, like it is really amazing to see like a good bard player just like, oh my gosh. So that's what that champion can do. Uh, but it is amazing to see that. Um, I want to transition a little bit to a hundred thieves because, you know, they had that roster change. Uh, we were kind of, I was low on contracts, then high on contracts. And now they lost two games again. Um, you know, so they, bad this weekend. But they oh did God. play TSM, Team Liquid, to be fair. Yeah. Um, yeah TSM's not a real team. True. <laughs> true. <laughs> you said TSM. That's all I had to hear. That's all I had to hear. Yeah. I, I have <laughs> TSM in my hand right here. TSM uh, does. Coin. Yeah, it's a coin. Did, coin flip. Good analogy. Did we, did we even predict TSM to win last week, or do we pick 100? I think we, we I, I'm pretty sure. Your well, boy least, here. Me and Alistair. I, I predicted, predicted TSM, TSM to beat 100 Thieves and beat FlyQuest. And I did and think they wrong. played Fly that Quest. game okay. I felt like TSM played the 100 Thieves game well. Uh, I feel like but, 100 Thieves just didn't do anything. Yeah, they didn't do anything. I mean, it's, they were, they it's, had, teams they are going for it. Yeah. They had more kills. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even know what happened that game. They just yeah. back, got backdoored randomly. Like, <laughs> So uh, what I want to do is ask uh, your guys' assessment, though. So, so we've keep seen kind of ups and downs of this kind of this new – ish roster with contracts and poom what are your thoughts now after we've seen you know a few weeks now of, of play are you guys still feeling good about them kind of eh, or it's basically just like we we really don't know at this point i feel like I, poom, poom, sorry i feel like no. poom is getting kind of um exposed hmm. um and when he's not on like he doesn't have like a dominant bot lane like i've <clears> noticed <throat> he's very good on like stuff like like set He's very good at set support, yeah. but he was kind of just inting on Lulu support, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I and also like, I don't know, I I just get this feeling like Contract is that player who like he always thinks he's fed from the last game, but he's not fed. But this he's game. not fed. I yeah. mean, 
I mean, he was 6-3-4, and four, and Speak was 0-5-3. Oh, he was, relatively speaking, much more fed. Like True. The, but... Speak of, speak of that jungler who's like, he, he just like, he thought he was fed last game. I don't know it's the same thing, yeah. That was probably the worst scoreline from a jungler I've ever seen who actually got a dub. Um, uh, at least about... this split. I don't know. Brox is like freaking like zero hey, key he, at 30 minutes. I would I will <laughs> always rather have a jungler who doesn't die and is an insurance plan for me than a jungler who's 05 and puts a timer on me oh, as gosh. the winning team. Like literally zero I'm KP pretty sure at this game minutes. is the game where Double starts asking Lena, "Hey, uh, no one wants speaker, right? It's not your fault, right?" It's like that's <laughs> TSM McSmithy, let's replay that. <laughs> let's replay oh, it. Agree, honestly. honestly. T. Alex Smithy, get get TSM out of there. Save Dude, at this point, man, Spika is just not. I'm, he's not doing it for me. Like I really had high hopes. I didn't know much about him, anyways. But um, you know, I don't think he's. It's just not looking good. That's all, from what I've seen so far. It just hasn't worked out um, that well. Uh, but going back again to to Hundred Thieves to kind of keep it on there for a second. Um, mm -hmm. You know, contracts. I I feel like he sh if he plays Olaf. It's going to be pretty good, but I haven't seen much else from, you know, any of his other champs. Uh, I think he did win one with like Nidalee or something like that. So I think for now he he is still relatively unproven to me contracts. Like he has those good games, maybe on certain champs uh, that he can play that kind of play style he likes to do where he thinks he's always fed. But um, I think right now 100 Thieves is not as strong as i probably would i think i did more of a knee-jerk prediction last week just thinking that they yeah. were going to be really good and so i've kind of been brought back to earth um so to speak with them but um you know anything else on 100 thieves and then we can talk about tsm i guess since they lost <laughs> tsm flame time tsm flame uh, tsm uh, last, flame last it's a segment oh, i can't i can't wait uh it's a the new last segment. thing about 100 thieves is like Ryoma is definitely shown to be more competent as a player than we expected going yeah. into the season. But for him. his hard carry element is like he's not at that point. I don't mm. know if he will ever reach that like star carry, hard carry that like PoE can do, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, because I don't think his reliability is there yet. Um, his game against Liquid, I, I'll kind of forgive to some extent because Jensen's just better. Yeah. Uh, than Ryoma, like no one's gonna contest that. But even against Bjerg, this like this game. Like, there were resources on him that he should have been using. And, like, yes, he didn't feed his ass off like um, like some people did. Uh, but I just thought, like, that was such an unimpactful Syndra game for me. Yeah, like, he had, like, almost 100 more CS, I think, than Bjergsen. So he had... He, you know, he had, like, a large amount of investment put yeah, on him at block. certain points in the game. And it... I mean, they bullied Spika. Mm -hmm. So there's that. I... It's disgusting that they lost that game, in my opinion. Like, yeah. They oh, say I had no reason to lose. They had Mountain Soul, man. <laughs> Yeah, okay. More kills, more golds, everything. <laughs> and then we're just gonna find TSM too, because like they had the uh, useless Jace, oh, and then gosh. You're, the, 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 the Graves didn't useless have jungler. The, the Graves I don't, I don't didn't like have DD. This. He built a friggin' Last Whisper, or mm -hmm. uh, no, no, Mortal Reminder, when no one on the other team was stacking armor. There's a okay, actually, there's a Randuin, but there's a Spirit <laughs> Massage. One Olaf, Randuin, that's it. And then there's Wait, a didn't DD. Go Black Cleaver? He he did he did he went. He go black cleaver, but he, he should have just gone cleaver. freaking death stand second. Yep, That's it was so warriors black cleaver, weird. last a mortal reminder, and then he was starting to build the components of DD, but he was zero and five, so he didn't have the eco to make so such an aggressive damage build. I have yeah. no clue what he was thinking. Like when <laughs> you're hitting, you get too. DD. It's really that simple. <laughs> yeah, I I know from firsthand experience. Dude, when playing League of Legends, build Death Dance. That's it. <laughs> Just say, yeah. Don't I don't matter. care who you're playing. Build Just Death build Dance. Death take Phase Rush. Take Phase Rush. Yeah, yeah, it's so yeah. easy. Which he, he at least did that. He did that. Uh, he probably is not the, on the school of junglers who can actually take Ignite and get away with it. But mm -hmm. uh, normally, Ignite flash, can counter Olaf early. So yeah. <laughs> It, it was it was disgusting, but then let's just flame them now. Now that we're already flaming. Them. Well, okay. okay before we flame. Okay. Oh, I was I was gonna say the positives before we flame. Oh, okay. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Throw the thorns. <laughs> yeah. All just right. avoid you know a little bit of optimism. Sure. Right. looked pretty good. I'm gonna be honest. Um, he was not the bad player. He was probably the least bad player on the team. That's a weird way to say it. Mm. But yeah, a little bit played well in the first game against 100 Thieves. Mm -hmm. I felt like he was making a lot of nice engages, landing a lot of skill shots. And in the second game, I mean, he was on Braum. It's, like, hard to do anything when your team is inting. But, like, he was not inting. He was like, no, no, no. I'm playing very well this game. Yeah. I'm not getting into the TSM int mode. Yeah. And, yeah. 
I mean, don't so worry, they'll get them. They'll here's get what them. I'll say <laughs> is that like, them. so TSM beat 100 Thieves, which uh, again, wasn't the prettiest of games. And then they basically get hard stomped because they gave it away, you know, against FlyQuest, like in the first minute of the game. But yep. I knew even before that, when we were in draft, when Double Lift picked Senna, <laughs> I yeah, said, I what's going to happen here? Because I've seen a couple of, uh, you know, I think she's only been picked as an ADC maybe one other time this split so three, far. It's three times uh, total. And they oh, three not times. as much, but other regions do it. Yeah. Other regions a lot of it. just carry. And if that's the case. very bad win rate. That's what I'm saying. I haven't seen it do well here. And to top it off, Double Lift has never been good on Senna. So what the heck are they even trying to do here? We don't time to break the Senna curse or some shit like no. that. I mean, he, he can play it well in solo queue, but he can't do it in competitive. Yeah. <laughs> I still. kind of sad to hear because he's not a rookie. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, still, I, I still don't have confidence in it. Again, once I saw it, I was like, okay, this is going to be. We're probably going to lose here. And then after the first minute, I was like, okay, we lost. <laughs> So it's like that. We already We're given the given the game away here. with a champion like Senna who needs to scale. Like, you're just not doing yourself any any favor. So I, it's hard to say like how the, close that game could have been if they just didn't int it away in the beginning. But again, even from judging from the Hundred Thieves game, as a personal as a resident TSM fan, I'm not happy with uh, our team here, and uh, I'm basically feeling the same as like I've I've never really felt like I can be confident like in my prediction. Uh, with yep. them because too many carries. I I don't know if it's too many carries or it's they don't enable like their carry enough. I and I, I said this earlier where I felt I think like they've... I mean I just felt like Bjergsen should be it right. Mm -hmm. Let Bjergsen carry and I feel like they don't give him uh, too much carry potential. I mean he had had the Oriana and then he had the LeBlanc on hundred thieves that worked. But again that's kind of where where my thoughts are with that. I just feel like I don't know. Well, I, I think I said this last week. I feel like they have they have three carries in every so all of their well all of, okay all of their laners except for the support they're all carries, but they don't enable each other to carry. If one falls behind, they're not trying to help the other carry. They're still trying just trying to kill. They're trying to carry anyways mm -hmm. ahead or behind. And I think that's that's TSM's issue. I think that's going to stay TSM's issue. Yeah. Well, I mean, Bjergsen is playing like stuff like Zillion and like you know, tank fiddlesticks and stuff. And then Broken Play is playing Orn. So I think, like, there are too many carry mentalities, I think, but they're not That's, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, there's... So they're not drafting like they're all carries, but they're definitely, like, carry mentalities where, like, you know, I'm, I'm sure Spica is not having a great time. Like, what we were talking about, like, the like before the split even started, he's probably just getting pulled around the map and being told... Yada, yada, yada. Hey, help my lane. Hey, help push this out. Can you cover me while I, so I can go recall stuff like that. Just like every single lane is talking to him like that. Yeah. Um, I, well, yeah, I just hard for they, junglers on TSM for that. Yeah, they just don't have a play style is my, they don't. you're is right. My, you're absolutely right. They don't, they don't have, have an identity. Style. They don't have a, <laughs> a, like, you don't know, like you, you watch a TSM game. You're like, like, I mean, even though EG has been kind of, you know, on the downslope, you knew how they were going to play. Like, you knew what their identity was, their game plan. Cloud9, be... Team Liquid have very Cloud, clear very play clear... style. Exactly. They do the same thing every game. Yeah. And and they do Rome's it well. Blabber carries. Yeah. Team Liquid, uh, freaking Jensen and Tactical carry. Yeah. It's the same thing, and it yeah. works. Absolutely. And you know what? Everyone in the freaking world does it that way. <laughs> yeah, I just don't understand TSM's uh, game plan. Like, I, it's hard to know what... You look at their draft, and you're like, okay, what are they going for here? Like, who's going to you know, what's the strategy behind this comp? And that's how I feel like most of the games uh, with TSM. But that's kind of <laughs> well, how I felt I this like whole split it. and last split, <laughs> the split before that, <laughs> coaching staff. <laughs> I'm like, hello, coaching staff. I, I feel like TSM would have lost their spot if it wasn't for their budget. Because if they couldn't, if they couldn't, if I mean, if they never got like Bjergsen, I think they would have gone under by now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, they can't, they can't, yeah, do anything yeah. anymore and they haven't for a few years yep. but they have the only been, reason like, they're able to pick up poorly. games is because they have superior players yeah they're not performing poorly kevin you make you make a good point yeah. there um but it's but just not, but that's because the players i don't think as a team they're yeah. that great but i think they, they just have good players good players yeah like like what we were saying about uh team liquid at the beginning of the split where mm -hmm. we weren't sure how if they were actually good or not it's just they just they're winning games because they have better players not because they're necessarily a better team and i think that describes tsm really well personally yeah. Yeah. They're not playing to their expectation. That's what it is. Yeah.
And I think Team Liquid is moving away from that. We're kind of seeing that Team Liquid, they do have better players, mm -hmm. but even when Broxa and Impact don't do anything, they're just overall a better team. So yeah. They just kind of mm. absolutely. Yeah, so they're starting I, to get they're starting to get their yeah. They're starting to get back together, but like mm -hmm. it's it's very clear Team Liquid has good coaching and TSM has bad coaching. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that's that's very clear. Like uh, I feel like Team Liquid, like they they just have this like sort of thing where like the game could go so badly for Team Liquid, mm -hmm. but they'll still win because they're actually not only a better players but a better team. They just you know, they just play the same way every game, which is yeah. like slow and steady wins the race. But TSM just like we're gonna play scaling one day and lose, or we're gonna play fast and hard and lose or win. Like it's just yeah, pick something, bro. Absolutely. Pick something. Um, something. Going to your yeah. credit, I think again with Dardock before and then Spica. Um, for me, I feel like the only way they can kind of get over this jungler hump is. I'm not even joking this time, but someone like X Smithy for this reason. I agree. Is the veteranship and and the fact that. X Smithy knows how to win games. He's not going to be a speaker where they're like, speaker, come here. Speaker, come do this. Dardock, do this. Or you're, you know, there's no kind there's of like, money. yeah, there's, there's respect behind uh, someone's name, like a veteran winner. I mean, even like someone like Brox, I think could command that because he's, he's a pretty proven player, um, at least in Europe. But like, I think that's what they need because otherwise the jungler is just going to get called all over the place and honestly like you need to have that kind of freedom to to have some space to operate and make your own calls sometimes especially around objectives because obviously that's a lot where team team uh, tsm fails so um i don't know i think it's going to be a, a talk that we always revisit going back down to the jungling going back down to the drafting going back down to the coaching uh it just seems like the same three problems that we keep harping on and honestly i think that's Gonna have to one or all three of those are gonna have to be fixed for us to see some consistency, in my opinion. But real quickly before we get into predictions, I did want to talk about one more bright spot, which is Golden Guardians. They went two and zero this week. Uh, granted, they played Dignitas and Immortals, not the best teams out there, but they went two and zero. Uh, and I mean, I, I, they messed up my predictions. That's for sure. I know some of you guys voted <laughs> Golden Guardians, yeah. but messed me up. So, what do you guys think of, of Golden Guardians this week? Closer. Closer. Yeah. Is it, is it closer or closer? Close. Yeah. Closer, closer is I how think. people. I think he's like closer, like the finisher sort of thing. Yeah. So okay. That that's. It's, I, it's I, red that's usually. Closer. It also just makes the most sense to me to hear it that way. I, yeah. Like closer. Like why would you name yourself that? <laughs> I'm closer to winning. Uh, <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, I think I think he what he's what makes or breaks that team. Yeah, absolutely. 100 yeah, agree. They he did get TF. They did get I, TF. One yeah, game. and Demonte got his TF, and mm -hmm. you know he 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 landed some gold cards. Every FBI now and then. Filios, that's kind of guaranteed uh, win. I will say that that Immortals game, I mean, it was really close. Like Insanity. Oh, that, that was so damage. awesome! I was I'm happy to see Carthus mid, man. That was, that was sick. so sick. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know if Insanity played that well, but he his Carthus. I mean, Carthus does a lot. Like, a lot. Don't have to play that well on Carthus. Yeah, like, I, I was just watching the match. Like, I feel like his ult was very late. His first ult in the game was like. 20 minutes in the game or some 25 or something like it was very late in the game when i even saw him click the r button i was like that's yeah. odd but he did like get a triple kill and that was pretty sick and all i, did a lot I mean, of damage. I'm, I'm glad karthus is being played to some extent but this character competitively is so hard to balance like he's going to get nerfed again yeah. for some reason yeah. or another but well, why did they buff him and they, uh, they i don't know the, uh, no i do know because they took a they wanted to take him out of jungle back to soul lane yeah. so they and took they out values that jungle. helped him jungle but then it, he was he was already fine in mid lane. It's just people weren't yeah. playing him. Yeah, his win rate went up in jungle. Yeah, yeah, his win rate literally went up in jungle by like yeah. a half a percent or something. It's because all the people who just play Karthus thinking it was strong stopped playing it, I assume. But either way, yeah, closer is insane. Um, did you guys speaking of Golden Guardians? Did you guys see this meme video on the front page that was like Golden Guardians versus Dignitas or something like that? I it didn't was, see that one. It was the funniest thing. It's like two minutes of like. Very low effort posting in a sense, but very high effort. I'll I'll post it in the uh, I'll post it in our chat later. But essentially, Demonte was just saying like, Dignitas, isn't as you're gonna lose to us. Like he was shit talking on Twitter beforehand, and then he totally destroyed them. Yeah. And it was, it I was mean, I'm, poetic. I, I'm just also glad to see it again. Just some innovation. We got the Alistar, we got the Karthus. The only cha the champion I'm really disappointed we haven't been seeing, but I think I understand why is Caitlyn, because I think Caitlyn she, works so she's really well. Be next patch, right? That oh, 100 percent, guaranteed, guaranteed. 
getting buff. But especially with Bard, I don't know why people aren't playing her with Bard. That lane is so good. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, for sure. It's definitely I'm so gonna be. I haven't seen it. I mean, it's definitely going to be interesting. And I think, like, you know, speaking of champion diversity, I mean, we saw even uh, Johnson and Aphromoo pulled out the, the Kog'Ma Lulu. <laughs> I mean, like... Let's go! Yeah, I know, hey, right? And I love uh, Kog'Ma. The work is actually really good. I think, yeah. uh, I think Mitchell broke, by the way. Yeah, I, I see his, his lovely face just frozen there. <laughs> Let's see if his Discord... I, I, lo I love seeing Kog'Ma, dude. Yeah, Kog'Ma's... Uh... I wish that champion, like, was I mean, we've seen him mid, but... I, it was That's the first boring. time I, yeah, it's the first nah. time I got to see him with Lula, and I really wanted to see it pop off. But uh, let's I, pause for a second and let's see if we can get uh, Mitchell back. And we're back. Unfortunately, Mitchell's internet went out. So, as you can see in his box down there, it's just his avatar uh, on Discord. So, he is no longer on the podcast for the remainder of this episode. However, I will jot down his prediction so that he could still uh, carry on the points and figure out what's going on and see how he does compared to all three all three of us here. Um, but before we get into predictions, we got to recap what we did or how we did last week. And uh, just as an overview, me, Mitchell, and Alistair all Got six correct predictions. Kevin, you got five. So uh, like it was that? still pretty close. I mean, we didn't do great. 50, 60%. Uh, it's not great. Than but last week. Yeah, it's definitely better than last week. That's for sure. So let me just run it down real quick. Uh, 100 Thieves versus TSM. Me and Alistair predicted that correctly. Uh, Team Liquid versus uh, EG. Team Liquid won. Uh, so we all get, get points there. CLG versus Dignitas. Uh, me and Kevin got that. Uh, did we? Wait, who? won that i thought i voted uh dig to win that one yes you're right so uh mitchell and oh i might have recorded this wrong yeah dig won it that might... right yes dig won that so it's... yeah dig think... one. clj just went oh two that's all i know so yeah dig one i'm looking at it right now yeah dig one so actually so no we did worse than we thought so <laughs> so me i got five right Kevin, you got four right. <laughs> and, oh, I actually guessed CLG, you're right. And Mitchell and Alistair got seven right. So they actually um, did better because Mitchell and Alistair both predicted dig for that one. Right. Um, let's see, C9 versus EG, we all got that wrong. Uh, TSM versus FlyQuest, Mitchell was the only one to get that right. Uh, Immortals versus, uh, who did they play again on that one? Golden Guardians. Golden Guardians, uh, we all GG predicted one. Immortals, so we lost we didn't none of us got that right i hate na sometimes i know right it's just <laughs> never like it's not like my guess has made no sense it's just that it's like how am i supposed to bet when it's a 50 50 for these teams yeah. Yeah. everything's I, I like can we bring back uh jat's dog to i know the right games? to the, predict the games <laughs> what's his name kubo kubo yeah, I don't shiba know. Inu? uh it's <laughs> either it's either jat or kobe's dog is uh, is a shiba i think it's jat it's, because it's i remember jat. they were I'm doing the cast last split and i saw the dog in the background I'm like holy cow that's that is such a dog. cool. Dog. I love Shiba Inus. Um, I like corgis. Corgis, I do like yeah, those too. corgis are nice. Uh, okay, so way. Sunday, uh, we got Team Liquid versus Hundred Thieves. We all got that right with Team Liquid predicting that. Uh, predicting Liquid, Team Liquid. Is just literally carry my predictions. They I, they do, man. You you've you, they've been treating I mean, you to well. To be fair, I just guessed them either way. But I like, know. Uh, but hey, at least I mean they've won seven in a row. At least they're working for sure. you. Shoot. Um. All right. Next game is Cloud Nine versus FlyQuest. We all got that right. We predicted C Nine, CLG versus Immortals. Uh, y'all got that right. I got it wrong because I put too much confidence in CLG. Um, and then weird. finally, Dignitas so against Golden Guardians. Uh, Golden Guardians won that. And Kevin, you were the only one to predict that one correctly. So, I know I'm you probably don't even thing. remember. You probably no, don't I, even rem remember. I remember because I wasn't on the Dig High train for either game. Dig won the first one yeah. and lost the second one. So I didn't pre predict Dig for either. And I was like, oh, great. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, so for this week, our matchup of the week is it's a clear winner. Cloud9 versus Team Liquid. Battle for first place. Who do you guys got? Kevin, do I need to ask you or are we... I mean, last, to... last time I guessed C9 actually and I got it right. But this time... Yeah, I mean, this time is even harder for you because Team Liquid well, is actually looking pretty harder. good. So the question is, do you th do, do I go with the team I do I do I want to go with the answer I th what I think is going to happen? I know who I you want. want. No, I know Alistar wants Team Liquid to win. I do. Uh, I think it'd be more interesting. I, I think that's more interesting if Team it Liquid is. Wins. But are I just they like Liquid a lot more? As will a... they win? Is the question. And and what's interesting again, you mentioned the sev seven game win streak for Team Liquid, so they're obviously on an upswing. Whereas Cloud Nine has lost what two of their last three. 
So yeah. it's kind of shaky for them. So that makes it even more interesting because C9, although usually strong these past three weeks, have kind of shown some weaknesses. So, mm-hmm. you know what? I'm going Team Liquid. <laughs> I, I, oh, I think. Let's go, baby. I, I'm going I'll on the Liquid Team train. Liquid. I, oh, okay, here, here's what I'll do. I'm going to say Team Liquid, but I will also say this. I think Cloud9, I, I, I'll vote. I'll, I'll say Team Liquid's going to win, but I think Cloud9 is going to win. What? What? That makes no I, sense. Makes no okay, I, I'll, I'll put putting for, his put money down. on Liquid, but he, in his brain, brain, it's actually. I, I think, I think what's gonna happen is Cloud Nine's gonna say, you know what, we just lost two games, we probably shouldn't have lost. Now we're playing the, the first place game, so we're going to, we're not gonna try anything. We're gonna just sit down and we're gonna grind it out. And I it's think just Cloud Nine's gonna win. Or like something super defensive in mid lane. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's gonna be like, it's gonna be some support mid lane. Blabber's going to go Olaf, they're going to stomp mid-jungle, and then they're going to win the game. That's what I think is going to happen, but I'll put my money on Liquid. Okay. That's pretty odd, yeah. though, because you just laid, put a lot of reasoning for <laughs> I mean, I get what he means. Like, yeah. Honestly, Jensen's like super strong point right now. And... Hold on one second, Kevin. Uh, some, we're echoing somewhere. You're echoing off Mitchell because his Discord's unmuted. Oh, let's boot him off. <laughs> But yeah, oh no, he just muted. Anyways, um, yeah, I mean, in my mind, oh, okay. like Jensen's yeah. been a strong point and stuff, but like the problem is Niski is going to neutralize that, especially yeah. especially with Blabber. And so where are you going to get your leads? Maybe you could use your support roams, maybe, I don't know. Um, it's going to be hard. Uh, if Impact doesn't decide to show up, and if Broxa, especially if Broxa does show up. If Broxa shows up, we have a lot good chance, but this is the most aggressive jungler playing against the most passive one right now in the LCS. So who are you going for, Team Liquid? Uh yeah, I gotta root for my boys for this one. All I mean, right, that's what I'm talking I, about. I'm sure Mitchell is on the other end shaking his head right now. I mean, Mitchell okay. just doesn't like teamwork, but it's not a question <laughs> of who's on the other end. He's and I understand. I mean, I I've been talking about Liquid for like four splits now. I think yeah. on the show, like every so I'm, I mean, for two of those splits, we won both of them. So I was like, all right, sick. yeah, all right. But, well, um, let's go then to Friday's match. First up is Evil Geniuses versus Immortals. Well, it's like which evil geniuses will show up? Because yeah, is it gonna be the team that? I wish there was a clause that told us like who are they actually fielding for that week? Because I didn't even know the Swole Bros were coming in, which yeah. was really odd for my predictions last week. That's true. I'm betting EG. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go EG too. I'll I'll be different. And I'll say Immortals. Okay, Immortals. Okay. So you you basically you'll be different. And you'll say X Smithy. It, it's it's no the fun X-Mithy if everyone chooses difference. the same thing. That's true. Uh, all right, Team Liquid or FlyQuest? I'm going to. But on this Liquid. one, everyone's going to choose the same yeah. thing. Yeah, this one I'm put for sure. Liquid and Liquid. Steen, I usually make predictions pretty clear cut. Yeah. They're against each other. All right, Saturday, Hundred Thieves for CLG. Oh man. Oh, Again, w- which which Hundred Thieves shows up? Uh, I that's feel a like good CLG question. wins games not because of how good they're doing, but how bad the other team's doing. <sighs> that's kind of like CLG a right. baseline like litmus test. Like like. If you're mm. actually bad, you will lose to CLG. It's pretty much how it is. The yeah, thing is, I, I think 100 Thieves... I don't think they were terrible last week. I mean, they played I don't two... think they were that bad. I think yeah. they were just in a really hard week. Really hard week. I also think, like, Someday is going to be playing either Deuce or Ruin. And Which is very Either awesome. of those matchups, I think, Someday wins hard. Day is. I mean... I know, I like saying Deuce, though. I'm going to say Deuce. <laughs> Uh, TSM <laughs> actually should have lost last week too, so like yeah. keeping that in mind, 100 Thieves technically only lost to Liquid, and that's that's pretty okay. There you go. I'm so going I, 100 I think, Thieves. I think 100 Thieves is like not actually cooling down that much. Yeah. They just had a bad week. In terms I agree. Of yeah. I agree with you. A little bit of bad luck because yeah. this is the second time they've been back. To, I really hope 100 Thieves plays TSM in playoffs. <laughs> oh man, I don't. I'm scared. Oh my <laughs> god. <boy, gosh. laughs> All right. So are you going? Sh- are you guys going 100 Thieves? Or is sure. It All right. He's Alistair. 100 Thieves. Kevin. 100 Thieves. All right. Smart guys. Smart move. Even though I love Notorious POB, I just think 100 Thieves got I that. love POB too. He should yeah. be on a better team. He should be. I agree. Well. There are a lot of players that should be on better teams. The guy is at yep. least a top five, top four mid laner. And he's been making plays as if he's a top three, top two mid laner. So it's crazy. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. Let's go with TSM Dignitas. As much as I think TSM sucks, I I have a hard time not voting them against Dignitas. How is Dignitas doing recently? They've only won one last week. 
The last two GGS, but beats me. The three and one the last two weeks, I believe. Yeah, if we want to put it that way, but the only good win is against FlyQuest, who did smack TS. Mm. Again, oh. that game doesn't really count. They just freaking <laughs> took the game. Ah. The TSM handed it to them in the first minute. I mean, they they've I, I mean, see, the sure. games they've won haven't been against that great teams. You talking about Dignitas? Yeah, but TS, which TM Seven shows up? You know, okay, here, we'll, 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 do, we'll do it this way. America, baby. We'll, we'll do it this way. He heads is dig. <laughs> there oh you go, my yes. god! He busted out the coin. All right, his dig. His dig. Okay, dig. Rallister, who you got, Kevin? Uh, uh... I hate voting for TSM. I I absolutely <laughs> loathe. I will abhor I don't the you. concept, but I'm voting for TSM. I you know what we should do. I hope we should we should have. Dark gets revenge. You know we should instead of on top of us all predicting, we should just do a coin flip for every for every match. every match and see how do, well we do. <laughs> yeah, we all got like something. nine out of ten, we right? We need a 10 podcast coin, and then this will be like the the, the field, and then this the is field. the experts, oh, gosh. and then we'll see what happens. I mean, I I got I got coins right here if you want to throw that in because I. I'll flip them. <laughs> well, I, I'd like to think that I have some analyst merit. <laughs> yeah, and so does this coin. So does this coin. I mean, remember, last split, the experts who are getting paid to do this were like some of them exactly. were below 50. That's so what I'm saying. Like, okay. All right, let's go to the next game. FlyQuest versus Golden Guardians. Again, you would think this should be easy. It should be FlyQuest, but Golden Guardians went 2-0. and FlyQuest... Well, they one, they, they got one and one, but I mean again they beat didn't they beat Immortals and Dig though? GG no, FlyQuest. Yeah, Immortals and Dig. Yeah. FlyQuest should win this, man. But which 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 of both teams is gonna show is Closer gonna show up? Because I think if Closer shows up, I think Golden Guardians will win. Oh gosh, why is this so hard? I'm going FlyQuest. If I think too hard, my brain's gonna explode. If I try, if I try to, you can't rationalize North American. LCS. You cannot. It, just doesn't... it is impossible. FlyQuest had the better win recently against TSM, even if it was a dumb game, and they only lost to C9 last week. Yeah. So I'm gonna put FlyQuest because All Wild right. Turtle's back in, and I like Wild Turtle. All right. Oh, if Wild Turtle's back in, then I'll go. I'll go. He played, FlyQuest. He played, he played last week. Yeah, he played last week. So yeah, I just I'm, assume I'm he's pretty back sure. In yeah, I'm pretty sure he's week, gonna play. If, if Wild Turtle's in, I'll I'll vote FlyQuest. Okay. FlyQuest, yeah. not FlyQuest. Like All right, Immortals C9. I'm going C9. I think that's per I think that's a bit of a gimme, but watch watch C9 to lose. Watch C9 oh, no. go 0-2 this surpri They like, surprised us two weeks in a row. Style and blabber, and then Team Liquid will start calling his cell phone during the match, saying, like, "Please come <laughs> back." Uh, yeah, C9. Okay. Uh, finally, Sunday we have first up Dignitas versus Evil Geniuses. Uh. I think Evil Geniuses should win this, but again, because I, I don't really know. A Dignitas gets wins, and I don't know how. Uh, so I'm going Evil Geniuses. That's my opinion. Digs are... Digs, I Dardock, I think, has been doing well on Dig. He has um, been doing well. They're 3-1. and one. Yeah. Beating yeah, but they haven't Mike beaten anyone above like the top teams line. which is true but eg also hasn't exactly been playing so hot either so that's why i mean why... they just beat c9 though lucky win. there are only three three teams above 50 percent win rate so that's the problem yeah like, i mean our they... our fourth place team is six and six yep our fourth, so yeah three of them are six yeah jeez but that's what I'm saying. It's not so easy to just say EG uh, should win this, even though I think I they should. I give it to EG. They did beat C9. I know they lost a match, but uh, what, whatever. Dude, yeah. the Soul Bros should be fine. He's doing the coin they, I mean, they lost dig to again. Liquid. It's coin likes dig Dignitas. Again. You know what? Did, didn't Dignitas, you vote Dignitas but... both games last week, Alistair? I believe I did. I know actually. you like the Dignitas players, so. You guys I, all I like Johnson. I like Johnson. I like Lorlo. And I voted yeah. GGS, and I got the GGS one, right? That's so, oh. yes, he had to have voted Dignitas. But, hey, speaking of Dignitas real quick, we saw uh, Riven come out from Viper, and, uh, hey, he, they won. Dub's a dub, yeah. I mean, dub's he was great on it, but it, it was, he wasn't. Remember, I just, just remember you, remember you were saying, like, wouldn't it be terrible if they brought him in to beat plays one trick and, you know, they lost. I mean, granted, again, he wasn't the best, but he did enough. I felt like there were a lot of plays yeah. where, you know, Riven does what Riven does and you chase him. I mean, and I'd rather away. have him than Kumo there in those yeah. situations. But so, he did his job. He did his job. So it's just interesting to see that he he's still being used, even if it is for his one trick. Uh, okay, we already talked about C9 Team Liquid. Uh, 
TSM versus CLG. Oh, boy. This one, I think, could be... Oh, I just hope they don't make it cringe. But, oh, uh, it could I, I hope we get a 50-minute slugfest. I want to really say do. TSM really bad, but... I, I, think, I think TSM's <laughs> going to win. I don't think... I think CLG is kind of just not... They have no yeah. idea what they're doing. I, I don't think... C either. CLG doesn't... I don't even know what to think about CLG. Really, that's how I, feel I think. Like right I think now. Kevin put it perfect. If you're bad, you'll lose to CLG. If you're good, you'll beat CLG. Yeah. And while I d I'm not saying that TSM's good, I don't. I think they'll beat CLG. They're better than CLG. I think saying. they're better than CLG. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what. I, I don't know what to think about CLG. Yeah. I'm begrudgingly putting TSM two over this week. All right. Wow. Yeah, that's true. So we're all TSM on that one. We'll see what Kevin. Yeah. I mean, uh, Mitchell says on his predictions. All right, the last game is Golden Guardians versus Hundred Thieves. That's I'll a coin flip. Guardians. Game. I'll let the flip flip my coin here, uh, yeah. Alistair. I, if yeah, it's heads, Golden Guardians. If it's tails, Hundred Thieves for me. All right. But I honestly feel like either team could win that one. Uh, you got Hundred Thieves. Okay, Hundred Thieves. It is for me. Hundred Thieves for me too. I All right. Think had a bad week, like a hard week, and they yep. should have won one of them anyways. They shouldn't beat Liquid ever, so I, yeah. I think 100 Thieves... Dang, that means, Kevin, me and you have 100 Thieves going 2-0 and as well. Well, Alistair, what are, you, what are you picking here? I'll go Golden Guardians. Okay. Okay. I, it's another one that if Closer shows up, I think Golden Guardians win. They I, I think me, they win most of their games if they have Closer doing well. They remind me of X Envy. When they had Lyra on peak form, and I was like, "Well, I mean, if Lyra wakes up today, they're gonna win." Like, and yeah, he exactly. woke up for a lot of games, so they got to playoffs for so no reason other than him, basically. I mean, I think Apollo and Hotko were fine too, but like, holy moly, it, it, like pop off junglers are really something else. It, it would be really nice if some of the top orgs had pop off junglers. Heck yeah, <laughs> that would be nice. Like into some. I mean, to be fair, Brock's in playoffs. Maybe he'll just be a god. Who knows? We'll we see. we still haven't ever seen him in playoffs. Yep. But, I mean, uh, if they get to Worlds, I think Brock's will be better. He will be he will be the factor they need to be getting out of groups at least. In yeah, I, I made Smithy the prediction. Right now is, is not good enough for it. Here, here's my prediction. I think we're gonna get. I, I think if we have one team that makes it out of groups, I don't think it's gonna be Cloud Nine. Really interesting. Even with even no, well, actually no. The new way the seeding works is every every group will have a LPL team in it. Damn. And a and a European team and a European and I, team. Oh, so gosh. like, and I don't think it's gonna be Cloud Nine on a world up. level. Liquid is better. Um, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. I th I think if we have a team that makes it out of groups, it's gonna be Team Liquid. Wow. Okay. Well, they have more experience too on the international stage by far. It's not even close. Did any of the C9 members have? Oh no, Licorice has semis. Yeah, Licorice. Uh, and then has. Sven has. Oh yes, yeah, Sven. Did does he? So does Vulcan. Uh, does a Vulcan have some? Was he on G2? When no, they... that was Zazel. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Vulcan doesn't have anything but clutch gaming, which they made nothing happen. Yeah. Last... They went zero well, zero. I mean, they went they went through play-ins. True. Okay, they beat yeah. play-ins. That's fair. Uh, Niski hasn't done anything on C9. Has he? No. No, he no. was semis. Was he not the semis? N no, that's no that, was that was Jensen. 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 Yeah. And yeah, but I can definitely, quarters. for that's sure, went, Team Liquid has way more international experience. Mm -hmm. Even if C9 has a little bit, Team Liquid has that. You got two world champs. Beat. Yeah, yeah, so I don't think there's any comparison there. But um, is there any other last thoughts that you guys wanted to put in before uh, we wrap up the show? We actually have a relevant patch coming, so when that when that drops in pro yeah. play, that'll be that, that's going to change some things up. Is the next patch going to be world's patch? I mean, uh, I world's believe patch. it's world's patch actually. Oh, it is. Okay. So, so I yeah. think we're I think what we're we're going to see more Aurelia. We're going to see Swain most likely. Mm. Have you seen Swain's W range? No. I mean Love, the old uh, one I knew, but the new one. Oh yeah, no, I didn't see the new one. The le so it scales with rank now, and the, its base rank um, <laughs> range is by Twisted 2000. Fate Ultimate. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the and base it scales range up went to from 3,500 to 255. What? And it goes up to... No snipes. way. I can see the snipes yeah. coming in. <laughs> okay, the damage is a little weaker. And the but nobody used that for low. damage. Yeah, it's not really for the damage. No, nobody used it for damage. They used yeah. it for zoning. It's basically just like a super uh, uh, concentrated Ash E now that does damage. Yeah, it does, does a little damage. I, I compare it more to like a Zareth ultimate, like a one-time Zareth ult. True. Okay, no, that's probably a better comparison. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. I don't know why they did that, but now he has a weird niche now that he can literally peek into the fog. 
Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I think we're definitely going to see Swain. I think he has a lot of potential. Yeah. Right. Lilia will be interesting. Support, right? With this new W, he's Oh, even yeah, that's support. right. Lilia. Is Lilia coming out this patch? Yep, she's she out this patch. Ooh. And never we've got a three-second buff at rank. Wow. <laughs> and a mana cost reduction. Oh my! Oh my lord! It's thirty less mana at rank five, ten less at rank one. Okay, well, so I don't who? know if you guys are sitting. His never move. His E. Oh yeah, never move. Um, it's just cheaper. It's fifty flat instead of sixty to eighty mana cost. Well, I I think the crazy one is his passive. That that's the big one for me. I haven't even read it yet. Uh, long story short, it so it used to go from twelve to six seconds at levels one, seven, thirteen. Now it's ten seconds at every rank, but now it scales at CDR. Ooh, yeah, that's good. But I mean, it still just goes down to six. At it, it still goes down to six, but you get it faster. You much faster because it's so much more natural mm -hmm. to get that. Interesting. Which I think is going to be interesting. Yeah, well, that's going to be uh, exciting then to to see how it affects the gameplay, especially if this is a world's patch, because that's going to be yeah. big. Um, but anyways, that's uh, going to wrap up today's show. Uh, thanks again for watching this time, possibly, and listening. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to email us at the All In Podcast, lol at gmail.com, or you can tweet us at the All In Podcast. Uh, I want to thank my co-hosts once again, Kevin, Alistair, and Mitchell, even though you did cut off a little bit early because of your crappy internet. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Thanks again for their always, uh, their always wise insight onto the show but until next time guys enjoy your climb on the rift try not to be too toxic and we'll see you all on the next episode peace